one of the biggest frustrations that we have, I think, especially with our personality style, is that our plans don't work out. Mm. So, you know, we have these big plans of I'm going to qualify and I'm going to work here or I'm going to do that. And then we fail maybe, or we don't get, you know, we don't get accepted in the firm that we want to go to or something goes wrong and we're like, okay, now everything's fallen apart. So that uncertainty we generally see as a negative thing. And what I loved about your story is that it is messy. If you look at it, there's no specific stepping stones of going, okay, it makes a lot of sense that you went from there to there. And that was, you know, the nice clean ladder, if you will. If, if, if you're comfortable with it, I really love yeah. you to talk through your sort of the, some of those stepping stones and how completely, I'm going to say off track they were, not because they're off track in terms of life, but just because it's not what mm. we expect things are supposed yeah. to look like, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I think back to when I was studying at university, sitting in the lecture halls at, at WITS, um, and, you know, I was not... I had no concept of where my career would go. I, I I would love to say I had some thoughts about what I wanted to do, but I, I don't even remember what those were because it was it was all very it would have been very hypothetical at that point. Yes. I I do think though that there was sort of a North Star that was always there for me. So and that included a number of things. Um one was, you know, education was already kind of there. I was, you know, doing some tutoring on the sides with, with high school students. That was sort of one element at North Star. Another element was kind of wanting to make a difference. So there was something in me that said, like, I want my my career to matter in some way. Yeah. I wasn't sure what that looked like at the time. Um, I also just always had this sort of personality. I don't know why, but when I would sit in, in lecture lectures at, at university, I would struggle to take in and absorb a lot of what they, what they were teaching. But what I did find myself doing was almost going into this like meta mode where I was looking above and looking at like, but why do we do it this way? Surely there's, there's there must be a better way. Like there's this, and you know, and oh, as yeah. I, as I continued on my journey, you know, that was, that was always kind of there. And not, right. not that I thought I knew better. Maybe no. I did a little bit, but no, no, <laughs> it but wasn't that. It was yeah. a, it was a, this, surely we could do this better. So, so that was like a North star that existed. These, the sort of passion for education, wanting to make a difference and always thinking about, can't we be doing things better? Isn't there a better way to do this? Okay. Um, like so that you... kind of sat there. Okay. Um, now in my role now that's, I get to really have an influence on all three of those. It all makes sense. I, right? yeah. yeah. But I had no concept of where that was. So, so I, you know, and I was not even planning my career in that way. All I wanted to do was get into hopefully a big four firm and, pass you know, and then see from there, <laughs> pass my exams exactly and get from there. And me, so I, I did, I did six years at PwC. I, I did my, my training for three years, uh, continued as an audit manager for three years um, and was not really sure what I wanted to do from there. I was trying to get involved in, in um, training at PwC, like you know, getting into the, into the classroom as much as possible um and and there were opportunities for that but it wasn't my core job uh mm -hmm. and auditing was interesting to me but it wasn't what i wanted to do permanently so uh you know i got a lot of benefit from the exposure i got there it allowed me to travel uh you know did some audits uh in different parts of africa which was particularly helpful to give me some yeah. some insight beyond our borders um but at a point i decided to actually walk away from the the profession completely and and it, that was more it was more of a, a i suppose like a calling kind of thing because i went to go work in a church uh, as a youth pastor and, and you know kind of yeah it was a complete it felt like i was going in a completely di different yeah, direction absolutely. um what was cool about that is i was doing a lot of teaching yeah. <laughs> i got to apply that critical mindset of like surely we could do this better because i was looking at the way things were operating and i'm like surely we can do this in a yeah. more effective and way you've always looked for that level of meaning as well so so that's absolutely true. so at the end of the day that kind of gave me this clear sense of purpose um and that was great and i learned a huge amount through through those i spent three years in the church and, and i thought i was going to do that for the rest of my life so you like i mean you qualified and then you kind of turned turned your back on your qualification if you will yeah yeah. Okay. So my parents okay. obviously were super excited about that um, <laughs> and all the investment they had made in me and, and everything and how proud they were of what I'd achieved. And <laughs> they were supportive, but they did question a little bit about whether this made sense. Understandable. Um, Not the greatest but, part of mine, yeah. Exactly. But but anyway, I mean, those those years gave me an opportunity to really kind of discover who I was and what I wanted in life. And, and yeah. um, 
there was a point where I decided to, you know, it, that I wasn't going to make that my full-time career and look to come back into the profession. And this is where, again, like at that point, now what do you do? You're looking for a job. You've got a three-year gap on your CV. Yes. Um, who do you apply to? Um, I had one firm I applied to who they didn't want to hire me because they thought I was Christian and I was going to come and I wasn't going to play nasty with people of other religions, which was which was funny because that wasn't the way I am at all. Um, but so I didn't get a job there. Frankly, I was probably overqualified for the role. They thought, so they thought it's you were okay. coming with ulterior motives. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but as it turned out, the one the one place that actually, you know, where, where I, f- I found essentially my dream job was at, at the Auditor General's office yeah. uh, in a in a technical training role. Um, mm. And what was really helpful, and again, that kind of North Star that I spoke about earlier, they they recruited me primarily because of the work I'd done in the church. And they could see I was a person who wanted to, you know, was people focused and wanted yeah. to make a difference. Um, and there's no, I mean, you could try and say, I want to make a difference, but when you've actually been living it, that, that, you know, uh, speaks volumes. And so that, that set me on the path, which essentially landed me yeah. where I am today. And, and I, I, and I tell the story about it. I, again, I could never have planned this or dreamed this, but no. essentially my journey from there, from a, from working in a local church in a small community with, you know, you know, I don't know, a few hundred people that I was interacting with. Um, and, and, and I loved that. And it was amazing. Um, I then went to go work in a, in a, you know, national institution that, that's, you know, many of us know about and, and is really important to, to the country. Um, got to play a role there and, and have some influence. This was another word that was kind of coming up for me is that I wanted to have an influence with my career. I thought I had ideas to share and I wanted to be able to influence. So I was able to do that uh, at, at the AG's office. Um, that led to an opportunity where I got to work for an African regional organization of Auditors General um, called AfroSAE uh, and got to work on a big continental project to to drive public sector professionalization um, that, that we worked together a little bit on for a while, Yvonne. Um, and a and, you know, fascinating project and just yeah. an incredible opportunity to do something meaningful and, and that, that, that can have sort of real world impact and impact on people's lives. Um so, so now I've gone from local church to to national okay. institution to continental mm-hmm. organization yeah. to then my next job ends up at IFAC, which is this international organization. It's a, a little bit of a funny story because the first the first week on my job at the African organization, uh, I had to present to an IFAC committee, uh, which was for me one of the scariest things in mm-hmm. the world to do mm-hmm. on stuff that I know nothing about. I've only just started and I'm just presenting to them about what we're doing and I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. Yeah. Um, but I discovered also that, that that actually IFAC is just full of people trying to make a difference in the world and, yeah. and people who, you know, who who value your views and opinions and that my voice actually could matter. Um, again, not, not something I could ever have learned in a classroom, but because of this journey and because of doors that opened for me, yeah. you know, I, I whenever doors opened, I try to walk through and make the most of what was in front of me, which I think is really important for anybody in their career. Just, you know, you can try, figure out where you want to go. But if you do the best you can with what's in front of you, the doors tend to open yeah. themselves over time. But I stayed true to who I was and and, yeah. and just tried to do the best I could and learn as much as I could as I went through the process. You know, my qualification was a fantastic foundation, but it was yeah. really the the beginning oh, of a learning of yeah. a learning journey and, and of developing as as a as a professional. I think there's there's so many things about there's so many things about that that um that I feel are, are such important takeaways for someone who's kind of on their journey. Um, and, and one of them is the plans that we make at each stage of our journey are based on what we are exposed to at the time, what we know about the world, what we think we want. And that changes all the time. You know, when, when you made the decision to work for the Auditor General, you had no real concept of how IFAC fitted into all of that anyway. So it wasn't even on your radar. Yeah. So you couldn't make plans like that because we're only able to make plans based on what we've been exposed to, which means that it makes sense that we should allow for plans to change and adapt and evolve because every time we're exposed to something new, um, the you know horizons broaden. So that I think is the first thing I really want people to understand is that don't hold on to yeah. your plans so rigidly because they're based on what your world is now, which may be yeah. very small. If you're yeah. in university, you know, or if you're studying, or if this is your first job, 
you know, you have a very small understanding of the world, very small exposure to the world. Every time you increase that, your understanding of how you fit in changes. I think that is so important. For me, when you know, I had very specific plans, you know, I knew exactly where I was going to be and exactly <laughs> what. So when things went off track for me, it felt like it was gut wrenching. You know, my life is over, yeah, yeah. and like you know, it's it's this plan or nothing. So I always value these types of stories because I think it's really important to realize that uncertainty is actually a really good thing. You don't mm. know where you're going to land up, and that's exciting. Because if the the sum total of your dream was based on what you knew at the time, you never would have gone further than like the auditor general. Yeah. You know? But yeah. you were able to evolve. So that I think is really, really important. The other one I think is is so valuable is people are so terrified and understandably so that if we don't make the right career decisions at every point, um, it's going to contaminate our future. You know, it's going to taint yeah. our future. We're going to be judged for it, criticized for it. And so we have a tendency to make what I kind of call CV decisions. Um, how's this going to look on my CV? You know, I want to take yeah. a year off and go and do this, but it's not going to look good on my CV, so I won't. I want to actually go and get more experience here or do this course or whatever the case is, but I'm not going to do it because it's going to look bad on my CV. And exactly as you said, who's going to hire me now that I've been my one of my many cats, um, you know, who's going to hire me now that I haven't been doing, you know, the, the perfect career thing. And I think what's really important about your, you know, your story is that you stayed true to who you were and found people who valued that for what it was. Belinda has decided yeah. to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, the value there is that you can add so much more value. Sorry, this is not my <laughs> you can add so much more value and you'll be so much more fulfilled if you can align your career based on who you are and find people who appreciate that like yeah. you know the first company that you said you, you know you went for an interview and they were kind of worried you could have played that a little differently and played down who you were and kind of like I'm going to mold myself into what you want so that I can fit in here yeah and I'm going to make you feel completely okay with everything because I don't want you to think of um, but that's kind of like apologizing for who you are yeah. um, and sort of trying to change who you are to fit into that. But, but there's no <laughs> way that would have gotten you to where you are today. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's, for me, it's really valuable that we can take steps that seem off track and, you know, like this isn't, you know, the corporate ladder, but it's a unique, it creates a unique set of characteristics of your, uh, experience and your qualification that makes you completely unique and gives you that competitive edge mm -hmm. that no one else is going to have yeah yeah and that's yeah. exciting you know so that yeah. i think is really you know that i think is really exciting is don't see stuff like that as oh my gosh this is terrible see it as this is a competitive advantage because yeah. i'm collecting something no one else is going to have and i don't know how that's going to come up in the future you know i don't know yeah. where that's up in the future that that's that's another thing i find like really interesting about your story um and the other thing is that your your plans were more based on who you are as a person and yeah. the concepts that excite you as opposed to technical topic based stuff you know what yeah. i mean so it's not like i was really passionate about tax and now i work in tax it's like i'm really passionate about making a difference and that's my focus kind of yeah. thing you know, and so your plans may, you know, plans could, you know, in a way it's like we should make plans more based on who we are and what we're passionate about conceptually as opposed to sticking to the job type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's kind of making me think about interviews I've been in. <laughs> and I think this is really kind of an important thing for, for many of your audience to, to understand. I mean, they're going to sit in interviews very often and very often they're going to try and do what, you said kind of yeah. sort of mold yourself and describe yourself in a way that works when honestly the, the what's been best for me is just being open and honest about who I am I have not hidden I mean when I came to IFAC I did not hide what my um what I believed and what my views were on certain topics and and um and they hired me anyway which is a really great sign as opposed to trying to hide it uh, I had a yeah. had a similar situation when I was looking for where I was going to move after PwC before I ended up going to the church. I had an interview with, with a, 
a, a private sector company and and um and I'm for some for whatever reason I chose to be very very open about my belief and my faith and all this kind of thing and I didn't get the role there and and I kind of came to discover afterwards that probably one of the reasons was because there were some questionable business practices going on there or, or I shouldn't just say question I mean maybe it was just culture I, I don't want to go as far as saying it was really yeah. questionable but 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 it would not have been a good fit for me at all. Yeah. And it would not have set me on a path that, that mm-hmm. was right for me. Now I could have told them what they wanted to hear and I might've got yeah. the job, yeah. but I chose, yeah, I chose to be open and honest, didn't get the role, but obviously ended up on a, on a different path. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of being very, being knowing who you are and what you want. And, and, you know, it doesn't have to be the same as what I want. Clearly it's, it's, you know, for each of us as individuals, like kind of being clear on that and being okay with, telling the story of who you are as you go on your career path, that's going to yeah. always stand you in good stead um, yeah. and land you in, in roles that hopefully are ones that will be a, a good fit for you. Yeah, I, absolutely. I think <clears throat> we underestimate the fact that um, jobs are relationships, you know, and, yeah. and there's a it's a two-way street. It doesn't feel like that when you're in the interview because the balance of power yeah. is generally not in your favor. So you're yeah. definitely sitting there feeling like, I need to tell you what you want to hear and I need to impress you. Uh, so we do kind of forget, we do kind of forget that this needs to work for both of us. You know, this yeah. needs to, this needs to work. Otherwise, you know, resentment builds, unhappiness, expectation gaps. Um, and then, you know, that frustration of I have to like leave who I am at home, uh, you know, in order, in order to do this, like doesn't work. For, for me, it was one of the reasons I left the auditing profession. Um, you know, I was offered a contract to stay on um, as, as audit manager when, when I qualified. <clears throat> but um, it's very difficult to have the same sense of idealism and like um, you need to you need to do things this way in the real world. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and for me, I'd been lecturing auditing for you know for three years already, and it was like for me, it was black and white. You you need th- this is the way to do it. And you know, in in the real world, auditing is messy. You know, <laughs> like it's yeah. very messy, and it it you know it caused a lot of stress for for people around me because I was very idealistic. I've always been very idealistic. I've always prioritized training people over budgets because those yeah. people have to go to the next job. You know, so I'm not just going to tell you what to do and you don't understand it. Um, and that caused a lot of tension where I was, mm. understandably so, because you know we're balancing our budgets and and and, and all the rest of this. Um, but it was because I didn't belong there. So they they felt quite stressed out um, mm. because I, I didn't fit smoothly into what they needed. And I felt stressed out because I wasn't getting what I needed and I felt like my priorities weren't being taken into account or like what I felt was important, you know, wasn't being focused on. But that's because I belonged in teaching <laughs> where you can be idealistic yeah. and where it's where your whole entire purpose is to prioritize the training of the person as opposed to, you know, as opposed to the stuff. So I, I 100% agree with you. And I think all along the way, there's no way I could have predicted, you know, where, where I landed up at all. Um, but I still find most people that I work with who are still studying are still under the impression that they should know where they're going to be, you know, mm-hmm. um, and that if they made the wrong call or they didn't get a call back for the interview or they failed something or, their CV doesn't look like great, that it's going to contaminate their career. 